Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be doing YouTube videos again. So if you haven't already, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so that you get notified anytime I come out with a new video. So I have been thinking about moving to LA. That is something that I really want to do. And it's made me think about this crazy, crazy experience that I had renting a room. This is the story of my absolutely insane, crazy, psycho landlord. So I had just gone through a breakup and I had been living with my parents for quite some time and I just wanted my own space. I wanted to feel that independence that I had before. So I decided to look for a room for rent. Now I went on Craigslist and I know what you're probably going to say, why would you go on Craigslist? But hear me out. I have actually found listings um, for apartments through Craigslist and when I've rented rooms before when I lived in San Jose. So I found this place. It was five minutes away from my parents' house. It was this really beautiful house. And the landlord basically just said, hey, this is all women in the house and I'm only looking for a woman to rent it. So the first time that I went to go look at the place, it was in a nice neighborhood. Parking didn't seem to be an issue and the house was so nice. There was a beautiful backyard and it just seemed like, the, I mean, the kitchen was huge, lots of storage space um, if I wanted to cook slash store anything in the, in the refrigerator. So I went to go see the place with my sister and the landlord seemed pretty nice at first. You know, she had been in the military before, so we kind of bonded over that because my dad was in the Marines. And there was two other roommates, uh, both were females, and she just had one specific rule, which was no men sleeping over. But she didn't say anything about having friends over, having any strict guidelines, and trust me, I had seen other postings that were like, no friends over, can't use the kitchen, you are not allowed to be loud after like a certain amount of time, blah, blah, blah. So this just seemed like it was like a good place and the room was a nice size um, the bathroom was right next door and I just thought it was gonna be great so I decided to move in and I was so 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 excited I was um, picking out you know my TV that I was gonna have and picking out the bed frame and just I felt excited and happy because I was gonna have Finally, I know it's kind of crazy, but my own room for a bit. The day that I moved in, my ex-boyfriend helped me move in. Um, he helped me set up the bed frame. He helped me set up my dresser, all of that. So he's helping me move in and it's like, what, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. Then the landlord comes home and then she like peeks into the room and she's like, hey. And then she sees him and she's like, hi. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And then I get a text message that basically said, remember, out of respect for yourself and us, don't bring no one ever in the house. She never said that I could not have people over out of respect for myself and everybody in the house. So mind you, I had already moved in and she has these specific rules that she did not say. So um, I had him leave and I was like, that's, that's weird, um, but it, it's, it's fine. Um, just don't have guys over. Also, when I had started moving into the room, I smelled this strange smell, um, and it was like during the summer, so I just thought because one of the roommates had a cat, that maybe that was a cat litter smelling, um, but you know, I thought it would be fine. It wasn't really bothering me. Now, remember this, because it's going to matter way later in the story. So, uh, the roommates. There was a roommate who was moving out, and then there was a another roommate who... Um, had been living there maybe like a few weeks before I moved in. So I remember having the conversation with the roommate that was moving out. Hey, like, you want to tell me a little bit about the landlord and what it's like living here? And she's like, yeah, it's great. Um, you know, she really cares about her tenants. She is like a family to her. And I'm just moving out because I want to live with my boyfriend. Cool. So then that night I had the conversation with the landlord. I was making dinner and I was sitting at the table because I didn't want to eat in my room. And she was like, yeah, she's moving out with her boyfriend. And I just think that that's not the way to do it. Like, why does she want to live with her boyfriend? But hey, you know, that's her life. But I just don't think that you should live with a person before you're married. And, you know, that's just me. Like I set boundaries. I've been engaged like seven times and married three times. 
you got she'd been engaged seven times and married three times but you know what that's not my business like I don't okay so I just kind of went about my day and I you know just like went to sleep the next day I get this text message from her hey how's everything going do you need a dresser I can help you with your dresser I can help you set it up do you need towels do you need this do you need that and I was like oh no I'm fine thank you and then she starts asking me, oh, like, what's your schedule? Because I didn't, you know, ask her schedule. And at the time, I had been working 9 to 5. So I was like, oh, I work 9 to 5. And then I'm usually here at this time. But sometimes I take an acting class. Um, I think she was just, like, curious about my schedule. So that was fine. But then she starts getting really weird. And this is where, um, now mind you guys, I forgot to mention, I was only there for a month because of how psychotic this woman is and all of the experiences that happen in a month. So she starts, like I said, she was asking me if I need anything. Then she asked me, I think it's a week after I had moved in, hey, um, do you need help with your laundry? Now her rules were that you could not do laundry. You can only do laundry after like a certain time. So like 11 p.m. or some weird thing because of the summer and to conserve water. So if I did laundry, I would just take it to my parents' house because I could get it done versus coming home from my acting class and getting home around midnight and having to do laundry and stay up even though I had work the next day. So I would just do the laundry at my parents' house. So she was like, hey, have you done laundry yet? Um, I just, you know, I, I can help you with your laundry. And I'm like, no, I did it at my parents' house, but thank you. So then I get a, she explains to me that she has a, a housekeeper coming by and that the housekeeper cleans all of the rooms. So I remember calling my sister and I was like, hey, she says that she has a housekeeper coming by and um, that she cleans the room. Like, isn't that weird? Like, is that weird that she wants to, like, clean her room to have a housekeeper? Also, like, why wasn't it mentioned that she has a housekeeper? So one of the things about me is that when I had moved, I went through a bunch of my old clothes and decided that I was going to donate it to the Goodwill. So I put it in this, like, yellow, um, yellow laundry bag to remember to drop it off at Goodwill. So I had that in the corner of my room and basically my landlord again, she's like, hey, did you do laundry? So she continued to send me text messages like, hey, um, good evening, remember to wash at night, especially in the summer. And I was like, hello, okay. And then, and you have space in the bathroom, there's an empty drawers, if you need laundry soap, I have extra, but please don't do large loads. If you put large, put in like um, a smaller load. So I was like, okay, cool. So she just like texting me. And then I get another text the next day. Hi, good night. Don't leave your front window open only on the side. You never know. So I was like, okay, I close my room at night, but maybe she knows that the window is open because of it. it's like right outside. So I was like, okay, that's a safety issue. That's not a big deal. And then another text about if you have laundry, please do it in the evening. Okay, woman, I get it, but I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it at my parents' house. Like, leave me alone. Like, she's, like, just texting me all the time. And then she's like, hey, remember that I have the housekeeper coming by. So I'm like, cool. So I had a conversation with the other roommate. I was like, hey, isn't it weird that she, like, wants to do your laundry all the time? And she's like, I think that it is wonderful that she wants to do our laundry for us. You should have her do your laundry for you. Like, that's amazing. I don't need somebody doing my laundry for me. I think that's weird to be going through and, like, seeing my underwear. I don't know. I'm just going to do my laundry myself. And then also, like, I don't need to do my laundry multiple times a week. Like, that's weird to me. That's a waste of water. That's going to mess up my clothes. And I just, that's not, that's not me. So then again, she said, I wanted to ask about your laundry. Did you need help? Because I know how it is to be busy and I'm slowing down with school. So please talk to me. Like, it's no trouble. I feel like it's therapeutic to me. And I said, um, I'm fine. I appreciate it. Um, and then she just starts to talk about how she had helped the other roommate set up her room and everything. And I was like, look, lady, I'm good. So remember how I told you one of the roommates was moving out? So we had another roommate move in. And let's call her Katie. Katie was a single mom that had, um, I don't remember how old her daughter was, but she was very, very strange. Um, she like kept to herself in the room. She always had a bad attitude, but whatever. So I guess 
she didn't have full custody of her daughter. And one day, I was so happy because the landlord was gone. She wasn't bugging me. I had the place to myself. I was going to chill in my room and just watch movies. Because at that point, I had started avoiding being home because I just didn't want conversations about my laundry or how to get a man. Just crazy stuff. So I was so excited. I was watching a new TV show. And then suddenly, I just hear bang, 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 bang. Mind you, this was like, everybody had left like two hours ago. So this had just started my night of being by myself. And there's this guy at the door and he's like, where's Katie? And I was like, um, I, I don't know where Katie is. And he was like, she has her daughter and she has her daughter and she's not supposed to have custody. Where is she? I saw on her iPhone that she's here. And I was like, what the? And he's like, I'm about to call Child Protective Services. I need to know where is Katie? So I start calling up um, the landlord and I was like, hey, Katie's boyfriend is here and he's saying that she's not supposed to have the kid and he's saying that he's going to call Child Protective Services and have the police come by. And she's like, do not, do not let the police come to my house. I repeat, do not let them come to my house. You need to make sure that the police don't come. And I was like, what? And then so I'm just trying to say, hey, I don't know where Katie is. Katie doesn't live here anymore. As soon as I find out where Katie is, like, I'll let you know. So he leaves thankfully. And then Katie just saunters on in. And I was like, hey, the your baby's father came by and was freaking out because you're not supposed to have custody and threatened to bring the cops here. And she's like, oh, thanks. Yeah, he's just like crazy. Like she didn't seem phased at all. Like, I was the only one freaking out. And mind you, I was home alone. And this guy was, like, banging on the door. And then the landlord's telling me not to not to bring the cops over. And I was like, cool. I'm glad that you are fine and that you are not stressed out. And I'm glad that I was able to handle that for you. Cool. So the next day, the landlord sent us all the texts that she wanted to have a conversation about, like, cleaning the house or something. So I was like, cool, you know, all of us were pretty good. We cleaned up after ourselves. The bathroom was always clean. Now, I don't know how everybody else's room looked, but mine was fine. Um, and since I could not have anybody over, my drawers had not been fixed. So they were kind of like stacked on top of each other. But mind you, that's my room. And it weird and starts to get even worse. Then I start to get these text messages from the landlord. Hey, um... I know that you haven't done laundry. Please just tell me, is it in the yellow bag in your room? When did she go into my room? First of all, landlords are not allowed to go in your room without permission and they are supposed to give you 24 hours notice. So then did she go in while the housekeeper was there? Because I certainly did not give her permission to go into my room. And I was so stupid to not have a camera like my friend told me to. But that means she went into my closet because the yellow bag had now been moved to the closet and then she saw it. And then she texts me, I will not have disorganized roommates. This is especially important when you're seeking a relationship in the future. Men frown at mess. Believe me, that's how I got engaged seven times because men love my OCD. I learned to maintain it and not go so crazy. So at this time, I had already started thinking that it's time for me to move out because I'm not going to continue to put up with this craziness. And by that time, I was already spending time at my parents' house all the time because I didn't want to be there. So I was like, what's the point of paying rent if I'm not going to be here? This is a waste of time. And I said, are you talking specifically about the laundry I've been picking up after myself? And those clothes are going to Goodwill. And she's talking about organization. And she says, the drawers, your bed, whatever else needs organization. And I'm still waiting for you to use the refrigerator. Please do, because I hate seeing it empty. You save a lot buying some groceries. Men relish organized, meticulous women. FYI. Why does it matter if I am cooking or not? It is none of your business what I am eating. It is none of your business if I'm buying groceries or not. So already you guys can see that she's just crossing the line. Like this is too much. I don't feel comfortable in my own space. Like I have a mom and dad. I don't need another mom. I don't need another person. And my own mom doesn't tell me that I need to fill up the fridge and that I need to be cooking and blah, blah, blah. And that's the reason why I'm single. And then she was like, hey, we're having a roommate meeting. When are you gonna be home? 
And I was like, um, I don't know. I think I was like going to a party with my sister. I was so excited because I hadn't been out in a while. And I was like, what, um, what is this about? And she was like, the mess. And I was like, what mess? Um, and I was like, if this is in regards to my room, I do not appreciate you being in my room when I'm not home. Same as taking photos. Do not go into my room. Um, and then she just like responds, we are all women. We need to be clean, whatever. Um, so I ignore her later that day. I get this text message. Jokara, just know I made a call to your sister and I will be telling her about how you are living. How am I living? From the beginning upon meeting you, I explained how I live and I'll explain it to your sister too. So when the time comes and asking you to leave, you'll understand. So I like called her because I was like, what is this about? And then she was like, please, no calls. I'm super busy with a client. Whatever. And I said, excuse me, this is getting out of hand. First of all, Jessica is not my mother. Because I had put my sister down as a reference. Obviously, bad idea. But she's not my mother. Um, and it is very disrespectful that you went in my room without notifying me and also against the law. And I said, I'm moving out. And she said, great, you're moving out. I don't appreciate your lies time after time. You lie about certain stuff. Just know that your sister never answered. Sorry, guys. I'm, like, getting really, really stressed out, like, just remembering this. And I was like, excuse me, what have I lied about? And I was like, you don't have to worry about me. Then I want my deposit back and I'm out. And she was like, how clean you are not. Do not make me extend from there. And I was like, oh, well, okay. Now, remember how earlier I said that there was a weird smell? She was like, there's a weird smell coming from your room. And I was like, there's not a weird smell. Probably the other roommate's because she has a cat in the cat litter and she leaves days on end. So I was like, no, I don't. And then she was like, remember, I will deduct cleaning services from utilities. And I said, no. When I moved in, there was a weird smell. I just didn't say anything because I thought it was the roommate and her cat, but it was not my room. I was like, that's a lie. We can go to court. I'll take you to court. You really like want to worry about the deposit. And I was like, what proof do you have that I soiled the carpet? What proof do you have? Me, the person that does not have a cat or a dog or anything. And she said, this is, and I was like, this is ridiculous. I have put up with your crazy demands with you going into my room illegally and so much more. And she's like, the smell is your, is your dirty clothes. Okay, like, let's think about this. If I were to have a bunch of dirty clothes, let's just say, I would have had to leave it in the same spot in order for that smell to permeate. During the summer, it would have to be soaking wet and it would take time for that smell to um, basically for me and it wouldn't be a smell of cat pee it would be like a smell of mold or bo something like that and I was like again why are you in my room I did all my laundry you have no you would have no idea about my clothes being out unless you went in my closet which was clothes that were going to the goodwill that had already been cleaned and were fine I have no no dirty clothes because you have forced me to do laundry on your time and she's like I'm not in your room I pass by and it smells and I said bs you said my laundry house. Would you know it's my laundry unless you went in my room? Um, and she was like, I'm assuming it's your BO clothes. <sighs> I know. Like, why was I going back and forth? I was done for going back and forth with her. But um, I was just really, really frustrated. And I just, like, told my parents. I was like, I can't do this. I'm moving out. Um, they started helping me move. And I really would try to, like, move my stuff when I knew that she was going to be in class because I just didn't want a confrontation with her. I didn't want to deal with that. And then um, we just moved everything else out. And she gave me back part of my deposit. And I just was like, you know what? I don't even care. So that really scarred me um, in terms of roommates and finding a place to live because it's crazy that a landlord can do a background check on you, but you cannot do a background check on them. But this woman was absolutely psychotic. It was disturbing my peace, disturbing um, my living situation. And basically it's like, you guys, we have rights. If you're renting a room, you have rights. It doesn't matter if it's a house or an apartment. Your landlord is not allowed to go into your room without your permission. Your landlord is not allowed to put those crazy demands on you. And especially demands that were not in place before I moved in. Yeah, that was just like a really, really crazy time. So if you guys are looking to rent a room, be very careful. Be really careful about who your roommates are. And also know your rights. And get a camera. That's an important thing. So that was my crazy landlord story. And if you guys have a crazy story, write it below. Comment below. Let me know. 
and just really know your rights.